It's Music Theory Online. Let's learn some theory online by watching modules online with Music Theory Online. Hi everyone and welcome to Module 8. Today we're going to be talking about triads. Most of you I'm sure have already played triads in your instruments. The triad is simply a chord that has three notes. The bottom note of the triad is always the root of the triad. You then add a third and a fifth above the root to make the triad. When you have the root at the bottom of the chord, the triad is in root position. We have different types of triads. Right now we're going to look at major and minor triads. You'll notice often the term chord is used instead of the word triad. That's because a chord is any combination of notes and a triad is a type of a chord. A major triad has the interval of a major third from the root to the third of the chord and then the interval of a perfect fifth from the root to the fifth of the chord. The example you're looking at is the C major triad. We have a major third from C to E, which is the root and the third of the triad, and a perfect fifth from C to G. The C minor triad has a minor third from C to E flat, and like the major triad, it also has a perfect fifth from C to G. The only difference in a major and a minor triad is the interval from the root to the third. The major triad has a major third above the root, and the minor triad has a minor third above the root. This is what the major triad sounds like. And this is what the minor triad sounds like. Let's look at these triads. First of all, they're all in root position. You can always tell when a closed triad is in root position because all three of the notes are either on lines or in spaces. Now that we've determined that these are all in root position, let's see how these major and minor triads are formed. I don't think it's necessary for us to check each of the perfect fifths in each of these triads. I think we'll just look at the root and the third and what interval it makes. We've already examined C major in the previous slide, so let's get past this one. The second triad is E major. It's a major triad because E to G sharp is a major third. The B flat major triad is major because B flat to D is a major third. The G sharp major triad has a major third from G sharp to B sharp. Now I'll play these all for you. Let's move on to the second line. We saw the C minor in the previous slide. It has a minor third from C to E flat. The E minor triad has a minor third from E to G. The B flat minor triad has a minor third from the root to the third, which is B flat to D flat. In the last example, we have G sharp minor. G sharp to B is a minor third. I'll play this line of minor triads for you. See how much we're using intervals and how important identifying intervals is in our music. Do you remember that we had primary notes? The primary notes are the very important notes in any key and they're 1, 4, and 5. Do you remember how we had perfect intervals on unison or 1, the 4th, and the 5th? That theme of 1, 4, and 5 being important continues in triads. Triads that are built on the 1st, 4th, and 5th degrees of the scale are called primary triads. All other triads, those built on the 2nd, the 3rd, the 6th and 7th degrees of the scales are secondary triads. Always remember to raise the 7th note in a minor key. What that means is the dominant triad will be a major chord 
in a minor key or a major key. The first degree of the scale is called the tonic. Chords, though, are built from the root. Scales use Arabic numbers to identify pitch, and triads always use Roman numerals. You can use the letter name of the root and the quality, major or minor, when naming triads. Always remember to raise the seventh note in a minor key. What that means is that the dominant triad will always be a major chord. In this example, the seventh note is G and is therefore raised from G to G sharp. That means the dominant triad is a major triad. That's because the seventh note, G sharp, falls on the third note of the triad built on the dominant. Confusing, isn't it? In the second line, we're in the key of C minor. Let's look at the dominant triad. The seventh note in C minor is B flat. When you raise B flat, it becomes B natural. That means the notes of the dominant triad are G, B natural, and D. The dominant triad in a minor key is the same as the dominant triad in the tonic major key. That means the dominant triad in A major and A minor is the same chord, E, G sharp, and B. C major and C minor have the same dominant triad, G, B, and D. Here we have triads that are built on each degree of the C major scale. We have a mixture of major and minor triads, as well as a diminished triad on the seventh degree of the scale. Don't worry, all we're going to look at are the major and minor triads at this level. In the major scale, the primary triads which are found on the first, fourth, and fifth degree of the scale are major triads. Again, we see the importance of that tonic-dominant-subdominant relationship. The triads on the second, third, and sixth degree of the scale are minor triads, and the seventh degree of the scale has a diminished triad, which really, really we don't need to know about quite yet. Notice how the triads are formed. To discover what the triads are in a major key, just write down the scale and then write the triads above each note of the scale. Let me play you the triads that are built on the C major scale. The second example is in E flat major. Each degree of the E flat major scale has a triad. Again, the primary triads are 1, 4, and 5, and they're major. The second, the third, and the sixth degrees are minor triads. Here's what they sound like. we have the triads that are found in the minor harmonic scale. It's important that we always use the minor harmonic version of the scale. In the first line, the A minor harmonic scale, the first and the fourth degree of the scales are primary triads, which are minor triads. The triads built on the second and seventh degrees are diminished triads, and we don't have to know about those yet. So the order is minor, diminished, major, minor, major, major, and diminished. It's the same in A minor and in C minor. Here's what the A minor scale sounds like. And here's what C minor sounds like. Let's just go over some basic rules when you're working with triads. 
always call triad by their own full name. For example, the C major triad or the A minor triad. Remember the dominant triad in minor keys is always a major triad because the leading note must always be raised in a minor key. That leading note is the third of the dominant triad. In addition to naming the triads by their letter names, they can also be named by their Roman numerals. For example, a C major triad in the key of C major is a one chord. An F major triad in C major is a four chord. When we have a triad in root position, that means the root of the triad is the bottom note. To write a first inversion triad, you would take the root of the chord and move it up to the top of the triad. When in first inversion, C is still the root. However, the bass or the bottom note is now E. This is still a C major triad, even though the root is in a different place. In other words, in first inversion, the bass note changes, but not the root. Here is what the root position and first inversion triad sound like. In second inversion, the fifth note of the triad is in the bass. This is still a C major triad, even though C is in the bass. The root is still the same, no matter what position the chord is in. Here's what the root, first inversion, and second inversion of the C major triad sounds like. Remember, the bottom note and the root of the triad are not always the same. You will often need to place a triad in root position to be able to identify the triad and the inversion. The first step is to put the triad in root position. Remember, when it's in root position, it will be line, 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 or space, space, space. It's easiest to name the triad when it's in root position. The bottom note will always tell you what the inversion is. If the root is the bottom note, then it's in root position. If the third is the bottom note, it's in first inversion. If the fifth is the bottom note, it's in second inversion. If you need to write an inversion first, figure out the notes of the triad. Again, it's easiest to begin with the root position. When you know the root position, you'll then be able to determine which note will be the bottom or bass note. Then it will be easy to write the triad. Let's go through these triads and see if we can find the name of the triad and what inversion it is. The first one is easy. It's a C major triad in root position. Here's a little trick to help you find the root of the chord. Do you notice how there's extra space under the C? There's room under the C for the roots of the triad to grow. The root of this triad is C and it's a C major triad in first inversion. In the third measure, we have room under the C for the roots grow. Therefore, the root of this chord is C, E is the third, and G is the fifth. And because the fifth is in the bass, this triad is in second inversion. In this measure, we have an extra space under the D, which means D is the root of this chord. This DFA triad is a D minor triad. This is in first inversion because the F, which is the third of the chord, is on the bottom. In the next chord, we have room under the G for the root to grow. That means G is the root of the chord, B is the third, and D is the fifth. That makes this a G major triad in second inversion. Here we have the root position first inversion, and second inversion of the C major triad. You may f also find the shape of the inversions will help you to identify which inversion the triad is in. It's important to remember that the triad is named by the root, and the inversion is determined by the bottom note. The root of the chord never changes, even in inversions. Let's figure out what notes we need in order to write these as major triads. Let's do the first one together. 
because these are going to be first inversion triads, we know that B is the third of the chord. Since we know B is the third, we need to go down a major third to G to find the root. Now we know the triad has a G, a B, and a third above B, which is D. This is a G major triad, and in order to write this in first inversion, we'll add a D, and then we'll add a G above the B as well. Let's look at number two now. How would you work through this one yourself? Just pause this module until you have the answer. Did you figure it out? To find the root, we'll go down a major third from G, which would give us an E flat. So the root of this triad is E flat, the third is G, which is in the base, and the fifth is B flat. Number two is an E flat major triad. Above the G, you would write the B flat, and above the B flat, you would write E flat. Of course, you don't have to write the flats in front of the notes because they're in the key signature. In number three, we have the note C, which is the third of the triad. In order to find the root, we need to go down a major third to A flat. A flat is the root, C is the third, and E flat is the fifth. So this is an A flat major triad. When writing the A flat major triad in first inversion, we would write E flat above the C and A flat above the E flat. Remember, the triad is always named by the root of the chord, and the inversion is determined by the bass note. Now we're moving on to minor triads. We'll go through the same steps to find the notes for these first inversion minor triads. In number one, we know the third of the triad is E, so to find the root, we must go down a minor third from E to C sharp. The root of the triad is C sharp, the third is E, and the fifth is G sharp. This is a C sharp minor triad. To write this as a first inversion triad, you would add a G sharp and a C sharp above the E. See if you can do number two by yourself. Just pause the module and I'll help you after you've got the answer worked out. B is the third of the triad, so in order to find the root, we must go down a minor third to G sharp. G sharp is the root, B is the third, and we need to find a perfect fifth above G sharp, which would be D sharp. When you write this chord, you need to write a D sharp above the B, and a D sharp above the D sharp. In number three, the third of the triad is C flat. We need to find the root by going down a minor third to A flat. A flat is the root, C flat is the third, and E flat is the fifth. Above the C flat, you would write the E flat. You don't need to add a flat in front of the E because it's in the key signature. Above the E flat is the root of the chord, which is A flat. Again, you don't have to add the flat in front of the note because it's already in the key signature. And now for the last example. First, we'll go down a minor third from A, which will give us the root, uh, F sharp. F sharp is the root, A is the third, and C sharp is the fifth. To write this, you'll add a C sharp above the A, it's C sharp, but again, you don't have to write the sharp because it's in the key signature. Above the C sharp is the root F sharp. Again, it's not necessary to write the sharp because it's in the key signature. Don't forget that the root of the triad gives us the name of the triad, and the bottom note or the bass note determines the inversion. Now let's form these second inversion major triads. Because these triads are in second inversion, the given note is the fifth of the triad. We need to find the root position so we can name the triad. We'll begin by going down a perfect fifth from B flat. A perfect fifth below B flat is E flat. E flat would be the root of the chord. We now need a major third from E flat in order to make this a major triad. That means the third of the triad would be G. Above the B flat, we would write E flat. Remember, E flat is the root of the chord. Above E flat, we would write a G. 
G is the third of the chord. Why don't you pause this module so you can complete the second example? G is the fifth of the chord. First, find the root by going down a perfect fifth to C. That would mean C is the root. We now need to find a major third above C. That would be E natural. This is a C major triad. Make sure you look at the key signature. Did you write the note C and then a natural E above the G? That would be the right answer. In example number three, C natural is the fifth, so we must go down a perfect fifth to find the root of this triad. When we go down a perfect fifth from C, you'll be on the note F natural. Don't forget to look at the key signature. We have an F sharp in the key signature. This needs to be changed to F natural using an accidental. A major third above F would be A. The notes of this triad are F, A, C, which is an F major triad. When we write the F major triad in second inversion, we write the root, which is F natural, and then A above the C. In our last example, we'll start by finding the root of the chord, which is a perfect fifth below D. That would be G. A major third above G would be B. In this triad, the root is G, the third is B, and the fifth is D. This is a G major triad. When we write the G major triad in second inversion, the G and then the B will go above the D. This isn't that different than writing first inversion triads. The only real difference is that now the fifth of the chord is in the bottom. Just remember, the root of the chord is how the chord is named and is the foundation of the triad. The bottom note, or the base, is not the root, but it's the base of the chord and it determines the inversion of the triad. Let's work with some second inversion minor triads. Remember the difference between a major triad and a minor triad is in the third. The third in a minor triad is a minor third, whereas the third in a major triad is a major third. Let's solve number one together. Because we're finding second inversion triads, the given note is the fifth note of the triad. Let's start by finding the root. In order to find the root, we're going to go down a perfect fifth from A flat. D flat is a perfect fifth below A flat. Remember to always consider the bottom note as the tonic when figuring out the perfect fifth. Now we'll go up a minor third from D flat to F. In the key of D flat major, F is natural, so D flat to F would be a major third. In order to make this a minor third, F would have to be lowered to F flat. The triad of D flat minor has D flat, F flat, and A flat. To write the second inversion triad, we need both the D flat and the A flat written above the A flat. Why don't you pause this module to solve the next triad? Let's start by figuring out the root of the chord. A perfect fifth below F sharp is B. A minor third above B is D. This is a B minor triad. The root is B, the third is D, and the fifth is F sharp. When we write the B minor triad in second inversion, we need a B above the F sharp and a D above the B. If you wish to do this third example by yourself, simply pause the module. I think it's really helpful for you if you try these before I explain them. As with the other examples, let's begin by finding the root of the chord. We begin by going down a perfect fifth from C sharp. A perfect fifth below C sharp is F sharp. That's the root of this triad. A minor third above F sharp is A. In the key of F sharp major, the A would be sharp. That would make it a major third. If the A is natural, then the interval is a minor third, which is what we need for our minor triad. This is an F sharp minor triad. To write this in second inversion, we add an F sharp above the C sharp 
and an A above the F sharp. In our last example, like all the others, we'll begin by finding the root of the chord. A perfect fifth below B is E. This is the root of the chord. A minor third above E is G natural. Careful because the key signature has a sharp. Careful because the key signature has a G sharp, so a natural is necessary. This is an E minor triad. The root is E, the third is G, and the fifth is B. When we write this as an when we write this as a second inversion triad, the first note to add is an E above the B and a G natural above the E. Remember when you're figuring out a perfect fifth or a major third or a minor third, the bottom note is always the tonic. It's so important to watch all accidentals and key signatures. Again, just to remind you, the root of the chord gives you the name and the bottom note is called the bass note and it tells us the inversion. Let's go over everything we've covered in this module. In order to make a triad, you must add a third and a fifth above the root. If the third is a major third, it's a major triad. If the third is a minor third, it's a minor triad. As we've seen before, the first, the fourth, and the fifth degrees of the scale are the most important notes. In triads, the first, the fourth, and the fifth are primary triads. When writing intervals, the intervals of the fourth, the fifth, and the first are always perfect. See how important that one, four, five relationship is. Secondary triads begin on all the other notes, the second, third, sixth, and seventh. Always raise the seventh in a minor key. That means the dominant triad is always a major chord. That dominant triad is the same in the minor and the tonic major keys. Scales have tonics, triads have roots. The root is what we use to name the triad, either by giving it a letter name or a Roman numeral. Triads can be written in root position, first inversion, or second inversion. The root and the base in triads are not the same. The only time the root and the base are the same is when the triad is in root position. I know I say this at the end of lots of the modules, but we've covered a lot of material today. The beauty of these modules is that you can watch them again. In the meantime, if you have any questions, just let me know because I'm here to help you every step of the way. I hope to see you at Theory Club and I look forward to marking your homework. Have a super duper week. Bye. It's Music Theory Online. Let's learn some theory online by watching modules online with music